This is a highlight from uh, the LULU58E2 Twitch stream from last night. It's a section where I explain the layout of Eager, E-G-R-E, the Erlang Graph Rules Engine, to my buddy Terry. We're both programmers with decades of experience, and uh, so here you go. Here's a clip from the stream. It's a brand new stream, kind of streaming every night, 5 to 7-ish uh, Pacific Standard Time, or well, Pacific Time, whatever happens to be Pacific or Daylight. So, yeah, hope you enjoy. Um. How to even start the the layout of things at each layer. So how much? And, and how do you pronounce eager? Eager, eager, like ogre, yep. but yep, but less less unfriendly. Exactly like you said it. Uh, so, so what's in in eager? Is that just the the server that handles sending messages wildly about? This is the graph, which. Um, tracks uh, so it has a supervisor which starts up the it starts all the graph objects the graph rules graph rules engine objects and then it um, it has the networking gear it has a network. It, 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 it forms all of the graph rules engine objects into a network. So we looked at that yesterday when I I was trying to say what what processes are connected to this object. So I think it was uh, head. Uh, when you when you when you propagate events through the graph in each it's a it's a pretty brain dead way of doing it in each object which is basically just a list of properties uh, if any of those properties are PIDs then any event once it's handled by that object gets sent off to any objects in its property list so right. if you have a character that has a head then if an event comes to the character and you look through the properties and find that there's a, a property with key value and then PID for the head it'll send the event to the head so the so eager handles all of that networking. So send events to um, uh, connected processes. It okay, also, what's that? I, I got to go let the dog out before she goes insane. Sure. Welcome, whoever just joined. Just waiting for Terry to get back. We're just explaining how uh, how eager eager mud and eager mud one all hang together. Eager being the Erlang graph rules engine, which is going to drive, hopefully, uh, a text-based mud and a tower defense game, a two D tower defense game. Probably put the code on the or the uh, GitHub addresses on the Twitch page. Can I mute? Feel free to post in the chat. It's kind of the whole point of this. It doesn't even have to be about eager. I muted you.
know if you heard me, but I muted you. There might be a kebab on the upper right of your video window. If you mouse over your video window, there might be a kebab that shows up. I can't unmute you or I would. <laughs> there we go. It's too complicated. Oh, we're up to four. We're up to four people. So two extra people. So the graph is a supervisor which starts all the rules engine objects, which are processes. And it handles all the networking of making sure that events can propagate from uh, process to process, rules object to rules object, or game object to game object, using its each object's properties. And then it also tracks, uh, no, don't do this to me. Oh, good. Uh, Ubuntu has decided my keyboard will stop working inside certain apps. Uh, it also tracks uh, which objects subscribe to an event and it allows you to send different types of events different types of is it different types of events I'll think it through you can do oh no different event different event handling so you can send an event into the graph like this thing happened in the world Bob died and you just say and you have to send it to a particular um, to a particular object so I, I when I connect people to the web socket I'll create a connection object which then is basically just their interface into the into the graph and so the connection object will just fire uh, I uh, maybe I'll connect it to their player and I'll fire events at the player and the player will distribute them through the graph it uh, you can broadcast an event. We saw that yesterday, where we want to broadcast to everything that's below us. So then anything that's not below us, we if we create if there's like the if we have a head that's on us and we have also the room that we're in, we broadcast events to both of those things. The room will say, "Well, I'm not under you, so I'll just fail that event you sent to me," and then the head will say, "Oh, I'm I'm under you, so I'll I'll resend I'll." I think I'll, I'll broadcast events to now my um, um, sub objects. Then you can also resend events. So the whole one of the major thing that's the major pain in the butt is if you want to pass information back and forth, the only way you can pass information is, is in an event. So if you get an event that says like like kill Bob and you're the Bob object and you're like oh well. I need to replace Bob, that's my name, with my PID, so then I'll resend the event as kill and then my PID. So you have to resend events, and you can you can allow events to succeed, and you can fail events. So if somebody says, like, unlock door, and uh, it's not the same as the event as, as you not being able to do something. It's more... I can't remember the cases where you would fail something. Like, oh, a broadcast. If you got a broadcast and you're not the ch a child of whoever's broadcasting it, you could fail that event. So it just stops the event in its tracks. Um, whereas if, like, if you tried to open a, a door that was locked, the the attempt of sending that event would succeed, and then the door might s say, you know, it might reply if it'll check if it's locked, and it'll it'll send a new event saying, tell the player the door is locked. So you can send an event to a particular object. You can broadcast to a bunch of, to every object that's connected to you. You can get a, an event and resend it, or you can just succeed it, or you can fail it. And then also it'll do, uh, it's a, a pub sub on succeed or fail. So every object that sees an event can say, um, Yes, I, I'm going to let this event succeed, but I also want to um, find out uh, once it's gone through the graph and everybody said, yes, this event can proceed. If it succeeded, let me know because I might do something. 
So Bob says, open the door. That event succeeds. So everybody who is like, okay, if that event actually happens, then I'm going to do something. So the door says, oh, I was opened. So I trigger a trap or I set my state to open or I end the world or whatever. That makes sense? Yep. So the graph is just, eager is just the network. That's all it does. So you could okay. use it for anything. It's just, it propagates events through rules, objects, and then they cause a storm of events and that's it. Then there's eager okay. mud, which is just the uh, web socket connection. Uh, well, it's a, it's a cowboy web server which opens WebSocket connections, and then it uh, sends WebSocket events to the graph, to Eager, and that's about it. And then there's the, whatever you put on top of, whatever it has the rules. So in this case, EagerMud1 is the rules objects. Okay. So anything that wants to respond to events and has rules, um, they all go in whatever sort of application you're building on top of the graph. Make any sense? Okay. Yes. That's it. Cool. So your tower defense game is at the same level as Eager Mud One. Uh, close. I'm going to have or, Eager or. Arcade which is going to be a cowboy web server, cowboy, cowboy web server, and a uh, w my WS animation Erlang server. So it's a, it's also a, is it the, it is also a, Cowboy web server, I think, or is it just another connection? I think it's just another web socket, and it draws. Uh, it does um, draw calls for animation. Okay. And so the cowboy web server will pass events. Um, how is this going to work? It'll pass events from the web page like you click on something, it's going to pass events from the web page to the graph. And then and then it'll do the web WS animation will do draw calls from the graph. And then on top of that will be so that's just going to be like how to how to have a game how to have a game that sends events to the rules engine and then gets stuff back and draws it and then there'll okay. be eager tower defense which will be the rules rules for tower defense game which will be madness because the events will be crazy but my motto is just assume well not really a motto my philosophy is assume that you have unlimited cpu unlimited ram and unlimited network and then don't worry about it until it becomes a problem and this whole thing is just a proof of concept anyway okay 